Traders, how are you with Marcello today? We're going to welcome you to the new financial collapse, kids. The second largest bank collapse in the history of the United States. And it's on the verge to be even bigger than the biggest collapse that we had in 2008. Let's go ahead and get started. Talked about this for a long time. The, the real reason why uh, in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain exactly what happened and why the bank collapsed. OK, now the the actual reason why this happened really goes back to 1999. Right. When Bill Clinton removed what's called the Glass-Steagall Act, removed parts of it. This is basically was instituted during the Great Depression in 1933. That's when the bill was instituted to basically keep the money that you have in bank accounts safe and not allowing these greedy bank executive pigs to go out and risk your hard earned money and risky assets. OK, so. As I, as I mentioned, the actual problem goes back to 1999. Now, I'm, I'm not going to go back to that date right now. I'm going to explain what happened to the actual bank that failed, what can happen, obviously, going forward. And then I'm going to, at the end of the video, I'm going to explain to you guys where the root of this cause of the, of the problem actually is, okay? Now, we have, I'm going to turn on the the recorder here for the screen. There's a, there's a gentleman named Gary Tan, that is the head of a company called Y Contributor. Uh, I think I'm saying that name wrong. Give me one second here to find the right name. Y Combinator, that's what it is. And he's basically calling this an extinction level event for startups. And will set startups and innovations back by 10 years or more. This is what he said on Twitter. This is important because, you know, Google was a startup. Apple was a startup. Microsoft was a startup. So if the, the you know, I'm going to try to upload this video on Monday, March 13th. If the government doesn't come in and do something, we could literally be just starving ourselves right in the heart when it comes to capitalism at its finest, right? And, and, and innovation and, and growth. So we're literally walking into the next uh, depression, I would say, right? Inflation is in, is in, a range where the interest rates that the central bank has isn't higher than the level of inflation. And since it's not higher, inflation is going to continue. And the interest rates essentially are what started this situation to happen because it basically put a brakes on the economy. Okay. Now the bank, and let me pull up my slides here so I can show you guys. This is uh, some of these slides are from the All In podcast. I highly recommend it. They're, they're really, really good. And they're experts when it comes to startups as well. This is basically the balance sheet for SF, SVB, which is Silicon Valley Bank, which was the bank that collapsed. Second largest collapse in the history of the United States. Now, a bank, when they receive money from people in deposits, that's a liability. So they have to pay that money back to people, right? So that's that's their liabilities in total, which is $195 billion. Now, their assets is $208 billion. The difference between the assets and liabilities essentially is what's called book value. It's a difference of about $14 billion. Now, the banking system in the entire world works what's on called a fractional reserve system. What that means basically is I put a dollar in the bank and they could lend out 90, 90 cents of it. So they really only have to have about $10 or so of the dollar that I put in. Now, this has changed over the years. It used to be that amount. Now it's literally zero, right? So if you look at the balance sheet of this bank, they have $14 billion in cash, right? So if you divide $14 billion by the amount that they have in, in assets, it's 2%. So they have enough cash to cover 2% of all of the liabilities that they have. Now, if we divide that by... The amount of deposits, they have 8% of the deposits on hand, not covering other, other liabilities. So if everybody were to go in and try to get their money out from the bank, they would only literally have 8% in cash to pay it out. Now, the other amount that's super important is this amount called available for sale securities. Now, what happened in this situation? Because the United States and the entire world was just booming and flush with cash everywhere, what happens is everybody deposited money in this bank. A lot more than I would say the norm. And 50% of venture-backed startups use this bank. The majority of venture firms have their money there. 
Over 1,500 climate and energy companies could face problems as well. Thousands of companies literally aren't going to be able to pay their, their salaries. Like imagine not only the companies that directly had their assets and money in this bank, but their providers, the kids, the families. I mean, this, is, this is, could be a really, really big problem. And more than 60% of community solar financing also use this bank. So they took that money, you know, the, the startup investors of the world, they put their money in, they, they go there to borrow money limited partners, which are a lot of the people that own a lot of these big funds use this bank to be able to go ahead and do mortgages and all these other kind of things. And so they received all this money, all this extra money because of the boom from the drop in the interest rates in the central bank, which is the root of the problem, right? It goes back to 1999. I'm going to explain that in just a moment. They take all that cash and they can't just have the cash shitting in the bank. They have to get some kind of return on it, right? So they go in and they invest that money in securities. These are treasuries. These are what's called mortgage-backed securities where basically, you know, tens of thousands of people take out mortgages, millions of people take out mortgages to take a handful of these mortgages and then they sell it to a bank as a loan. That's what an MBS is, a mortgage-backed security. And so there's a problem now that the value of these securities that they purchased, right, value less now than what they did when they bought them. And the reason why is because of the interest rates. Now, going to the next slide, and this is just to give you an idea of, of how this works, you know, a few years ago, up until about, I think it was when President Biden got elected, if you would have put in $100 at 2%, which was about the rate that we had before, over 10 years, that would be $122. Now, the same $100, you put it at 5%, for 10 years, it's $163. So that value of the securities that they invested in, which is the $26 billion, literally is valued 25 to 30% less than what they bought it for, right? So that's the first problem. The second problem is, obviously, they, they get the dollar from the depositor, and then they go out and invest or loan 90 cents of it. Well, about... Uh, roughly about 10% or so of these loans are very high risk loans that go to startup companies. Imagine you just, you know, I'm going to create a system, whatever technology you want to invent, and I'm going to go to the bank to get some money to invest in it. And they just, you know, they just hand out the money. Well, not hand out the money, but you know what I mean? So no credit, no history, no assets to back up these loans. And so what happens with the economy slowing down the way it is, their profits on these loans have collapsed. And most of the profits that they did make last year was in the beginning of 2002, right? So we have the loan values going down over time, the money that they receive from depositors that they kind of have sitting, let's say somewhere to sell them quickly if they need it, the value of that is going down. The loans that they gave out to people have collapsed as well in terms of the profit or money that they're making off of these. And then on top of that, we have an economy that's slowing down where there's a lot less people that are investing in startups now, which means that the deposits, the, the, the velocity at which they're receiving deposits is going down quite a bit because people aren't putting their money in the bank to invest in startups anymore. The actual startups that do exist, a lot of them didn't stop spending money. So the value of the deposits that the bank has is continuing to go down while their liabilities also is decreasing in value. So it's like a double whammy, right? So in 2021, they got $560 billion from a lot of these kind of high-risk loans. And then in 2022, it was 148. So 560, 2021, 2022, 148. So what happens? On March 8th, we have a situation where the CEO of the bank says, we're going to rebalance some of our books. They're going to go ahead and sell their securities, which are this number here for $26 billion, which remember is valued about 25, 30, 40% less than when they bought it at. And then we're going to sell some stock because we need to shore up some capital. They lost about, you know, something like a billion dollars. I'll find the number here in a second. They lost about a billion dollars or so when it came down to, to the, the sale of these, uh, these treasuries and the securities that they had. So 
then people start to ask questions. We'll, we'll say, wait a second, why is this bank trying to raise some money? And then the word gets out and then people will start to withdraw their money. And obviously, if they get to the point, right, if, if the 14 billion in cash that they have and the 26 billion that they have, if people want to withdraw that, that's 40 billion total of the deposit, that's 23 percent. If more than 23 percent of the capital leaves the bank, it's literally insolvent because it doesn't have enough money to cover the liabilities, which are the deposits from the depositors, the deposits that you and I put in the bank. See how it works? So I have a friend, he's in the startup game. They had $18 million in this bank. They were able to wire it out three minutes before the close when they literally shut down the bank. Thank God he was able to get it out. I have another friend who visits swanky golf clubs. He talked to a $100 million hedge fund manager, and he's saying that it's a lot worse than most people are talking about. And this is why this, this gentleman who runs Y Combinator, which is a really big uh, group, really big company in the startup game, is calling it an extension level event. Now, the, the, the problem is that now if the government doesn't come in and they don't solve the problem, there's a situation where there's going to be a run on other banks as well, because now the confidence is gone. This is why when it comes to this paper money, which is called fiat, right? It's literally only has value if there's confidence. If there's no confidence, there's, there's nothing that's, that's, that there's nothing connected to this other than the, the confidence that we have in the government. So, there's a situation now where there's a loss of confidence in the banks, especially the regional banks. And if people start to pull out their money in other banks, which now there's another bank in California where people are lining up to get their money out. If the government doesn't come in and say, hey, we're going to make sure that we honor all of these deposits or a certain amount of the deposits then we're going to literally have more bank runs, which is going to cause more defaults, which is going to cause a bigger problem for their financial system. Now, one of the situations that we have now with this bank is that the FDIC insurance, which covers $250,000 of insurance for your money in the bank, only 3% of the money that was in the bank is FDI insured, meaning that of the you know the the depositors and sorry if you guys can hear the the dogs going crazy it's dinner time so the 173 billion dollar in deposits they literally only have if i do the math real quick since big numbers i can't do them in my head they only have five billion dollars that they're able to insure now the problem with this as well is that two hundred fifty thousand dollars which was initially instituted in 1933 is now worth 5.7 million dollars so if we were doing it in relative terms based on the inflation rate that's reported by the government, the actual insurance should be 5.7 million. See what I mean? Now, to go back to the root of the problem, right? In 1999, Bill Clinton removed parts of the Glass-Steagall Act, which basically put a wall in between the banks and brokers that said, hey, you can't take people's deposits and go in and risk it in risky things. Right. You can go invest it in like startups like SFB was doing or the stock market and risky, toxic assets like we had in the financial crisis in 2008 and 2009. So that was removed when we had the dot com bust in 1999. There was a hedge fund called Long Term Capital Management that actually failed. It went bankrupt. And instead of letting that business fail and letting it go through the financial system, for example, Iceland during the 2008 financial crisis allowed their banks to fail. They're doing just fine right now, right? Nobody went to jail, by the way, right? Then they sold the toxic assets to different banks, Europe and the United States and everything. Then we had the 2008 financial crisis. Right. So the, the, the toxic debt is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and they're not solving the problem. Now, I believe this is planned. Right. Here comes conspiracy, Martello, because I believe that they're doing it on purpose to force us to get on their new financial system, which is the government coin, the CBDCs, you know, that kind of thing. So it's 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 a situation where it's going to be hard to get out of. I don't think it's going to get better. For traders, right? It's not all bad news. Whenever there's a really bad situation, there's an opportunity to make money. Obviously, if you don't do it properly or you don't follow the rules, you can literally just go bankrupt, right? Because previous results are indicative of future results and all the all the disclosures that the SEC and everybody wants me to give you. But 
just keep in mind that it's not all doom and gloom, right? During the Great Depression in 1929-ish, there was more millionaires created than at any other time in the history of the world. So just keep that in mind. Now, hopefully the government's going to get back in. I'm recording this video on Sunday. I'm going to try to upload it on March 13th. So hopefully we'll have some news from the government saying that they're going to cover the deposit is because otherwise we're walking into an extinction, extinction level event. See you guys next time. Oh,